Subscription, pull, subscribe on the channel, and go on the computer and watch his channel. Goodbye, you. see you tomorrow. We do a video and subscribe on the channel. What's going on fishing folks? Welcome back to Guy with the GoPro Fishing Show. Um, this will be uh, episode 137. Not sure what I'm going to call it yet, but it's going to be, you know, having a lot to do with uh, spinning rods and finesse baits, but I'm talking hard baits, not Ned rigs, not you know, a box of stick baits and all that kind of stuff and none of that. Hard baits. Alright, so um in this footage, you know, it has been a year an amazing season of catching quality fish from shore. Um I don't know if it's just from being a super fishing nerd like myself that um, it's just the progression of my fishing. I don't know what it is, but lately uh, it's been, if you look through my video uh, library, there's been a lot of big and alerts and um, that means it's pretty self-explanatory that means that there is going to be a quality fish catch in that episode so uh, I'm bringing you another one and believe it or not it was on this dude right here which you saw on the thumbnail the bomber Square A, I mean, I think it's got a maximum diving depth of maybe three foot, but uh, it was weird. I got to City Park after work Friday. Nobody was there. I was there by myself. I had the whole place to myself as far as fishing went. Um, didn't have to move out of the way for anybody, not that I mind, especially, you know, families pushing strollers I feel bad when I'm in the way and I got my rods laying there and you know I gotta move so I, I'm I feel bad so you know if you see me up there and you're like oh sorry don't please don't say that because uh, you know I'm the one that needs to provide you the clear way around the the lake there but uh so I just wanted to stress the importance of anywhere highly pressured. If you downsize, the odds of you um, not only catching numbers, but I've caught just as many four and five pound bass on small baits than I have on, you know, um, a DT-16 or a DT-10 or some honking swim bait. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, my my PB was on that mag draft, which is a six-inch swim bait, but, you know, flashback minis, stuff like that, man. Not only do little ones like it, but when you're matching forage size, Either that or they're just on a tear and, and you got all the right conditions for them to just smash anything that either comes in their hula hoop or um, they like the color. It, we don't know what chartreuse and blue looks like to them underwater. We have no idea. We don't even know what spectrums they can see in and which ones they can't. Supposedly walleye can't see blue, but I don't know if I believe that. But anyways, I want to show you guys the contents of this box because it's just a mix of what I consider finesse hard baits and my spy baits, which is a rather small collection because they're the good ones are expensive. So check it out. 
all right guys this is my finesse box um as you can see you know i got spy baits mixed in with um here's my little cotton cordell bin We've got a machine lure works and a dual realis spy bait in there that's the spro spin john 80 berkeley spin bait i think they call it here's that SOB that got us that big one. Uh, here's another bomber uh, square A and baby bass, which I have caught decent fish on. And then here is like a maybe two foot diver if you burn it, but I like to wake it. And it's got all them like you know little bluegill feed bb's sound plus it matched the color of the air slash and we all know how good of a video that was i think i caught nine on that bait that day up there um here's some more little bomber baits here is uh jab customs um micro crank it's actually got a good rattle it's almost serves as a weight transfer so you can actually cast the thing one thing is it's like i've never been able to reel it fast and pause it i just kind of crawl it along the rocks and give it some pauses as you can see the bill's got some some uh you know scuff marks in it from the from the dents actually found a backup um sharp black back square bill 1.0 up there got the bluegill one the regular you know the one i bought can't ever go wrong with the old rebel cross i just gotta get some number eights i think these are number sevens or number eights so i can change and put on the right hooks um this actually needs to go into my ultralight box because i can't even cast it on a medium power rod this is the itty bitty cotton cordell uh big o this is the little guy for like a five six ultralight this is a savage gear bait it's a goby uh 40 millimeter yeah but it's got as you can tell by the lip it's got a really obnoxious wobble never caught anything on it we got two of the older diggers before you know the fusion 19 craze even though these are probably they're pretty sharp so they probably are fusion 19 before while they were testing them before they called them fusion 19s and then we got some finesse jerks man you can't ever go wrong with finesse jerk bait um rip stop obviously both these baits we had fun with in the early part of the summer up there catching fish um this is a carl's like a hybrid twitch jerk crank bait and then I did pick up the Berkeley hit stick because even though it's a floater, um, in cold water, this bait is not going to rise that much. And I know a little trick by finding some really fine wire and wrapping the shank instead of loading your bait down with, uh, uh, with uh, su uh, suspend strips. You can just leave them hooks on and wrap the shanks to make it a suspender. Like I got 28 gauge vaping wire in there that'll work fine. So, you know, cause I used to build my own coils and stuff like that, but I just like the color and the size and I think it'll be a killer in the colder months. And this is more in the walleye market, but you know what? 
market schmarket. How many lures have crossed over from saltwater to fresh and from species to species? Man, you can't pigeonhole stuff when it comes to fishing. You're just, you know, don't be narrow minded. Open yourself up. Think outside the box. Get it? But uh, anyways, guys, enjoy this footage. Don't leave home without one of these and a spinning rod. The connection knot leader, uh, uh, braid the leader knot, just, it was just proven to pull in a five pounder. It, if you go back into the video library where it says how to spool up braid on a spinning rod, It'll show you the knot that I use. It's a uni to improve clinch that I learned from Shaw Grigsby. So, uh, anyways, I'm going to shut my yapper flapper. I'm going to let y'all see these couple fish catches here. And then I will bid you farewell. So until the next time, y'all. Yeah, it's a good one. Wow. I hope it's not a turtle. I think it is. Darn it, man. Oh my god, that's a big old bass. Holy smokes! Look at that! My goodness! Wow! Wow! Is that the biggest one you caught out of here? Uh, it might be. Yeah. Yeah, it might be. It's nice size, buddy. Wow, thank you. Wow! Thank you. Holy smokes! Hold on girl, I'll get you unhooked. Hold on. Wow! Hold on, hold on, we got treble hooks. Hold on girl. Look at that. She was not 
playing around. On a spinning rod? I can't believe that line didn't break. I cannot believe that cigar held up. Hold on, girl, hold on. I know, it's weird, I know. It's weird up here. I know it, girl. See, you're free now, girl. You're free. You're free, mama. Holy smokes. Please tell me, record. Please tell me. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Look at all that beautiful slime on her. Hold on, mama. I'm not even going to weigh her. Cause I've had her out of the water way too long. I thought it was a turtle or something. Yeah. All right. All right. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I'm sure you guys can see that piece of rebar right there. So I got an old Vivitar um, like action camera. I'm going to somehow like attach it to a like a litter grabber or something and dunk it in there and see what it looks like underneath since they put the new drain in because I've had some break offs and not just from the obvious rebar rebar but there's something in there that'll straight shear your line. I don't care if you're throwing braid or what. It, it just cuts it like a freaking scissors, man. You know how fun that was right out in the middle of a of a cast like that? Unbelievable, dude. On a spinning rod. Unreal, man. I can't believe I landed that fish. I cannot believe it. Yep. This is the bait to throw tonight. This is the bait to throw tonight. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. Feed response, both hooks. Hold on, let me get some pliers, buddy. If, if you guys watch the footage, he come right out from the ditch or from the drain wall and smoked it. That's why I love this rod so much because it just loads up. I'm sorry, buddy, I gotta use sharp hooks. They, they help you too. They help you too, boss. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, bud.
And guess what I just redid? Thank God. Tied. I just retied after that. <laughs> Five pounder. Oh, you silly goose. Look at you. Look at you. Probably hurt yourself. You ready? Okay, buddy. Yeah! Man, we are on one tonight, you guys. On one tonight. Alright, guys. I don't know what to say besides heavily pressured waters, downsizing, bringing a spinning rod and some finesse stuff. It doesn't always have to be soft plastics. Um, you know, you know, 1.0s, small square bills, spy baits, small jerk baits, like what we started with. But I'm just amazed. I'm amazed that that fish stayed on. My leader held up. I'm just, what a day. What a day's fishing. But if you take anything away from this man, just you don't always have to be throwing casting gear. Keep a spinning rod in tow and, and a finesse box. Whether it's hard baits, soft baits, there's nothing wrong with it. You're not uncool to be throwing stuff on spinning rods. Trust me. So I hope you all enjoyed it. I know I did. And uh, we will see you on the next episode. This is Guy with the GoPro Fishing Show. Out for now. But just for now. <laughs>